Hi, my name is Paige Piccinini, and welcome to the course R for Publication. Today I'll be giving you a brief introduction about what the course can be about, and then working on setting you up for future courses to make sure your computer is ready to go. So I want to start off by answering a couple questions you might have about this course. So one question you might have is simply, why am I taking this course? Well, presumably you're here because you want to learn R, or get better at using R. So as I'm sure all of you know, R is a programming language traditionally used for statistics and figure making. But this course isn't just going to be about programming R, but about lots of other things within the R environment that can make you a better programmer and a better statistician and figure maker. So one thing we'll be doing a lot of is working in R Studio. So R Studio can be thought of as a text editor for R. It's the same way that if you're writing a large manuscript or a paper, you're not just going to write it in TextPad, you'll write it in Word or in LaTeX. R Studio works as a nice text editor to help you write R code more efficiently and better. We'll also be using a variety of packages. So packages are code that someone else has written for you to make your life easier. So for example, if you're in Excel and you have a bunch of numbers that you want to find the average of, one option is to add them all up and divide by the number of numbers, or you could simply use the built-in average function in Excel. Similarly, packages take what will be long lines of code and reduce them down to simple functions that you can use. So we'll be using dplyr a lot, which is used for data manipulation, ggplot2, which is used for figure making, and we'll be using knitter, which I'll talk more about later, which helps you build reports for what you've done for your work to make it easier for you to share your work besides just giving long R scripts. And then finally, we'll be working with git. So git is a method of version control for you to keep track of the changes you've done over time. So in the same way that if you're writing a paper and you're writing it in Word, let's say, and you send it to your collaborator for them to read, they make comments and send it back to you, you'll probably now make another Word document called manuscript version two. With Git, you can do the same kind of version control, but all within the single document, and it'll keep track of your changes over time. And I think this is really important, not just in the selfish level of being able to have this record of your work and see changes, but also on a larger scientific level, because you're really able to show the work you've done to the community and say, here's the path of what I've done over time. And really it gives you extra credibility for how you've done your analyses. Git also has an initial benefit of allowing you to share your code and share your data with other people. So let's say, let's take this as you, you're on your computer, you're coding in our studio, and you wanna be able to share your code with the world. So let's say you decide to upload it to Bitbucket which we'll be talking a bit about more later, but it's an online way for you to share code. So how do you get your code from your R Studio up to Bitbucket? Well, we're able to do that with Git. So the Git protocol allows you to save your work and keep a record of what you've done and then push that up to the internet. So Git's gonna be really useful for us, not simply for keeping this version control record, but also for sharing that code for people. All right, so another question you'd be asking is what will we be doing today? Well, the first thing we'll be doing is a lot of setup. So a lot of today is focused on simply setting up your computer and getting it ready to go. So today we'll be spending less time actually coding in R and more time just getting your computer set up so that you'll be the most efficient later on. We'll also be installing some packages and particularly making sure that you can install packages. We'll be focusing on two packages, dplyr, which is used for data manipulation, and ggplot2, which is used for making figures. All right, another question you'd be asking is what we'll be doing for most of the other days? Because presumably once our setup is done, we should have other plans for the future. Well, the general structure of the course is we'll start by learning a new statistical test. And what I really wanna focus on is not necessarily having the deepest understanding of every aspect of the equation, but having a basic understanding of what the test is doing and the equation behind it. And then more importantly, connecting that equation to your R code so that you can really understand when you're building your code and writing the equation in R, what you're actually plugging in based from the original statistic. After we do that, we'll also practice plotting a figure as is appropriate for the test. So you'll have both your statistical analysis and your figure appropriate for that specific data. And then we'll summarize all of this in an R Markdown document. So R Markdown is a way to more cleanly present your results to someone else, like a collaborator or other researchers, to show what you've done and show snippets of your code and any figures you've made for that particular analysis. And so we'll end each lesson by having one R Markdown document for each lesson to summarize what we did that day. 
All right, so we're going to start with the initial setup now. So there's going to be various steps that you're going to have to do yourself. Um, I will give you a time when you can pause the video so you can do that. There's also detailed instructions below the video and the text, so feel free to reference that as well for more details. So the first thing we're going to be doing is configuring Git. So presumably at this point, you should have already had Git installed, and we want to make sure that you've actually done this. So if you're on a Unix-based machine, go to open the terminal, and if you're on a Windows machine, go into the folder where you downloaded Git and look for the executable git-bash. I'll give you a moment now to do that. Please pause the video if necessary. All right, so if you're on a uh, Unix-like machine, you should see something like this for your terminal. And to check which, if you really have Git installed, you're going to type in git hyphen hyphen version, like you see here. And you should see something like what I have listed here. So as you can tell, I have git version 2.5.4 loaded on my machine. And you should see something similar. If you don't see a version listed, or you see some warning message about not having Git installed, it means you don't have Git currently installed in your computer. And you should look online for ways to have it installed. If you're using the Windows Git, uh, Git Bash, you should have Windows something like this, which again similarly shows this version for this particular machine. Okay, so now that we've confirmed that you do have Git installed, we're going to work on configuring Git. So for configuring Git, we're basically giving information about who you are so that when you commit to Git and when you say whatever your current document is, you're going to have a record of who did it. This can be important in the long run if you have multiple people working on the same document, you want to know who made what changes when. And so as you can see here, both my email and my name are listed. So first we're just going to check and see if you have any configurations. So we do this by typing git config space hyphen hyphen list. If you're on a Unix-based machine and you have no configurations, nothing will be displayed. If you're on a Windows-based machine, you might see a long list of things displayed, but not necessarily see your name or your email address listed. If you don't see any of your personal information listed, you're going to want to type in the following commands. Make sure here that you replace your name and your email with your actual name and email as you would like them to display. Feel free to pause the video now to put this in. All right, and so now you should see that your username and email display when you type in that last line of code, git config list. Again, this is how it should look with the git bash on a Windows machine. I've uh, blacked out here the user email, but it should display your email appropriately now. All right, so now that you have git fully configured, we're going to move into RStudio to make sure that git is connected to your RStudio. So I'll give you a moment now to open up our studio. Feel free to pause the video. So you should follow the file paths below given for Mac and Windows respectively to get you to this particular window, which is your options menu for git slash svn. And there's a couple things I want to point out here. So one, you should see a box that refers to enabling version control, and you want to make sure that it's checked. Note, what I'm presenting here is our studio for Mac, so it's possible that in your machine it will be in a slightly different place and slightly different wording, but it should be pretty much the same. Basically, you want to allow version control to take place in our studio. The second thing is you want to make sure that in this Git executable that you have a file path listed. If you're on a Unix-like machine, it'll look something like this with this user bin Git reference. If you're on a Windows machine, you may not see anything listed. If that's the case, click on the Browse button, navigate to your Git folder, so this is where you found that Git bash executable, look for a bin folder, and inside there you want to find Git exe. So you want to make sure that you connect it to the Git exe. Accept it, and then you should see that file path listed. I'll give you a moment to do this. Again, there's more detailed instructions below in the text if anything was unclear or too fast. All right. And so now that we have Git enabled with RStudio, we're going to want to create an SSH RSA key. This is a way that our studio on your computer can talk to the internet, particularly Bitbucket. So you're going to want to look at this box here that says SSH RSA key. If you already have a key, you'll see a file path something like mine listed here. If you don't see anything listed, you want to click on this button, Create Key. It will give you the option to create a passphrase it's entirely optional, it's an added level of security. If you don't want to create a passphrase, simply press enter and it'll create it without it. 
All right, if it was successful, you should now see a file path here something like mine. If it was unsuccessful and you got some error message, which is possible if you're on a Windows machine, you're gonna have to make your key back in the terminal the same way that you configured Git. So either go back to the terminal if you're on a Unix-based machine or go back to that git bash executable and you're going to type in this first line of code. So this ssh keygen. When it gives you the option of where which file to save it in, simply press enter. And then if you want to use the passcode, again, it's optional. I'll give you a moment to do this. Continue the video when you're ready. All right, so you should have closed this window in our studio and then reopened it and you should now see a file path listed there for that SSH RSA key. Now that we have our SSH RSA key connected, we're gonna to wanna to use it. So click on this view public key button. You should now see a box something like this pop up. So it's gonna say SSH RSA and then a long string of letters and numbers. You wanna copy that so you can paste it somewhere later. I'll give you a moment to do that. All right, before moving on to setting this up on Bitbucket, I just want to quickly go over the reasons for why I've told you to set up a Bitbucket account versus GitHub. So in all likelihood, if you've heard of one of the two of these, it's probably GitHub. Now, Bitbucket and GitHub are very similar with one key difference. Both of them allow you to upload code to the internet. Both of them give you free accounts, but how the free accounts work are slightly different. So on GitHub, the default is that all of your code is publicly available so that anyone in the world can see it. And if you want to make it private, you have to pay for it. On Bitbucket, it's the reverse. So by default, all of your code is private and you have to pay if you want the public to see it. So generally speaking, I am completely for code being open. I think it's important for science people to see your code and see your data and for it to be publicly available. That being said, at the beginning of a project, if you're still figuring things out and you're not quite ready for everyone to see it yet, it's kind of nice to have this private repository where you can only share with particular people. So my general pipeline is when I'm just starting off with a project, I'll upload it to Bitbucket, work on it, be able to commit it, have my changes tracked. And then when I'm really ready to make it public, I'll switch it over to GitHub so that the public can see it. Since this course is supposed to focus on really the path of publication, I've had you first make a Bitbucket account. So we'll mainly be pushing to Bitbucket. If you would prefer to post to GitHub, feel free to use your GitHub account. Just bear in mind that I will be giving instructions specifically for a Bitbucket. All right, so now we're gonna to wanna to put our SSH RSA key up on a Bitbucket. So go ahead and log on to Bitbucket. I'll give you a second to do that. So your homepage or your dashboard should look something like this, which lists all of your projects. So now I want you to go click on that top left-hand icon which should either be a picture of you or some faceless body, and then click on Bitbucket settings. This will take you to a page like this, and particularly you're going to want to go to security, SSH keys. And then you'll see the display I have here, although you probably won't have any keys listed. So you're going to want to add a key, which means you're giving it access to X talk to your RStudio in your computer. So to do this, click on the button add key. You should now have a window something like this pop up, and there's gonna be two boxes for you to fill out. The first is label. So this can be anything you want, it's entirely up to you. It can be my MacBook Pro, my work computer, whatever you want. In the second box, you're gonna paste that SSH key that we copied from earlier. Once you've done that, click add key, and you're done. So now you've officially set up Bitbucket and RStudio so they can talk to each other, so you can push and pull code back and forth between your computer and the internet. Pause the moment, a video for the moment to do that, and then go ahead when you're ready. So the last thing we'll be doing today is making sure that you can install packages in R. We'll be doing that with two packages in particular. So, the, so go back to RStudio and then go to the console, which is where you type in code directly. So to install packages, you do install.packages, and then the package you want to install in quotes. So here, for example, we're going to be doing this with dplyr, the package we use for data manipulation. So once you press enter, it should look something like this, where you see the package in the process of being installed with red, and it'll finally tell you where installed the package. The way that you know the package is done installing is that you're back to seeing this line letting you know that you can type in the code again. 
Until you see this marker, the package is still installing and you shouldn't do anything. Once you know the package is installed, we want to make sure that it really was installed correctly. So to do this, we load the package. You load a package by typing library and then the package name, with or without quotes. You'll see here that I have it with quotes in the example and without quotes in the actual terminal. So it's okay if you get some red writing like this, which tells you a bit about the package, or if you get warned that it was built in an older version of R. If you get an error message saying the package wasn't installed or that your version of R is too old, there's a couple of ways to explain this. So one possible problem for this is that your version of R is simply too old, because some packages only work under newer versions of R. To fix this, simply download the newest version of R, close R Studio, and then reopen it. R Studio will automatically detect that you have the newest version of R installed. Then you can repeat these steps of install.packages and library to load the package back in. A second possibility is that you don't have permissions to write to the folder for the packages. In this case, simply Google your error message and it will give you the fix necessary to give you permissions for installing packages. Once you have dplyr able to install, you're going to want to do the same thing with ggplot2. Again, ggplot2 is our package for making figures. So install.packages and then load the package with library. And after that, you're done. Congratulations, you've completely set up your computer to be ready to go for the course. So let's just quickly go over some conclusions and talk about next steps. So what did we do today? Well, we did a lot of setup today. So you were successfully able to configure Git, connect that Git to your RStudio, create an SSH key for RStudio, add that SSH key up to Bitbucket, and so it's a great computer ready to go. Additionally, we installed a few packages, dplyr and ggplot2. So what will we be doing next time? So next time we're going to practice reading in and manipulating data, particularly getting used to the different environment within the R, within our studio. We'll practice making some figures with some sample data. We'll commit various changes to Git so you get some idea of how the version control system works and pushing up to Bitbucket. And then finally, we'll make an R Markdown document to summarize the lesson. I hope that you've enjoyed this first lesson today and are looking forward to the next one. Thank you.